It's a whole new season of Grand National Cross Country action right here at RacerTV.com. Hello, everyone. Jason Wygant. Proud to say it's going to be my 12th season of making the call for this Amsoil Grand National Cross Country Series presented by Maxis. We've got an all-new event here for our season opener, the Mudmuckers GNCC, aptly named here in Bunnell, Florida. This is an off-road riding park throughout most of the year. And even though we have beautiful, bright, sunny skies today, a lot of rain leading into the event has led to a lot of mud down on the track. You know how Florida is, you're never too high up above the water, so you get a lot of rain and it just turns into a swamp. But what the heck, it's Grand National Cross Country Racing. We're used to riding in the mud, why not just start the season out this way? Now usually the sand is the theme of the opener in the Sunshine State, but there's actually a lot of good clay and dirt here, less sand than usual, but the mud is gonna be the great equalizer. And it'll equalize a field that is of course deep and thick with talent. Chris Boric, a defending champion. I'm sure you know all about him. Don't forget about Walker Fowler, last year's number two. The four of Chris Bittle had a win last year. Here's Adam McGill, always spectacular to watch and always a threat to win. What I'm really excited about is a lot of talent moving through the amateur ranks and the XC2 Pro-Am division up to the pro class. Like Walker Fowler on the number two did there a few years ago, and he's probably the strongest challenger for Boric. I don't think the number one is worried about it at all as he goes for championship number six. So we're ready to do battle. Of course, it's going to be two hours. It's a true endurance contest for the machines and the riders, especially when you throw in these unpredictable course conditions. It's not a sand race, it's a full-on mudder today. And we're off and running. And I'll tell you what, the last thing the field wants to see is a good start from Borch. Last year, he became quite the whole shot artist, and he's got himself another good start right here. The Twin Air Dorisi Racing whole shot, but now it looks like his buddy, Bindle, has moved around him to the number one spot. And a little bit of sand out here. This is typical Florida terrain now. But as we get deeper and deeper into the woods, they're saying it's going to be a lot different. And there you can see some of the standing water on the track. Bindle continuing to lead Borch around. And Borch taking looks around, just looking for lines. Oh, and just like that, he's actually taken over the lead. That was a bad decision by Bithel, but that's always the case on these opening laps. Riders really don't know exactly where to go. Now Bithel retakes the lead. So two friends out of Pennsylvania having a good time battling with each other. A couple other riders in the hunt here. Brian Wolf with a good start. McGill up there as well. Let's give you the XC Mo replay, a little slow mo, to show you what happened off the start. Now, Boric, known for his passes on the last lap, only last year did he really start to dial in the starts. And here in our Rocky Mountain ATV MC replay, you see him controlling the field. Jeff Pickens on that number eight coming in right behind him, but then they shuffled the deck quite a bit after that. And now we're down into the bogs, the swamp lands, that will probably be the real factor in this race. And you see everyone playing it somewhat conservative through here, especially in the ATVs. The goal is to keep your heads dry, free of mud as long as possible. You're not going to be hanging on for two hours with muddy gloves. You've also got a muddy camera here now. It can make it difficult to figure out who is who. You can tell the uh, Suzuki style of plastic on uh, the leaders it makes it a little bit easier on them. Now check this out. We got sand and mud through this section. And I believe that's still Bethel leading them in and out of the woods. Kids, it is already next to impossible to figure out who is who as every machine is covered in mud. Oh, look at that line there. And a thumbs up for it. That was Adam McGill. I can tell that just from the body language. We always talk about what a good time he has out there. And everyone was trying to be smart and figure out the high line. And he just drove straight down through the middle of that section and made some passes. He's starting to pick up the pace here out in the field. But right now, Chris Bithel has it under control. Twins have notoriously been very hard on crankshafts because that big long stroke of those two cylinders just flexes the crankshaft around. So we were seeing bearing issues. Research development people at uh, Amsoil could show us that it was likely an oil problem. And they were correct, that was the issue. 
Instead of having to redesign the engine, I just have to do a uh, better quality oil. Racer TV is brought to you by Amsoil. Rocky Mountain ATV MC. And by... Back to the action here at the Mudmuckers GNCC. Brought to you by Moose Racing, and it is Chris Bithel in the lead. It's what they call making hay while the sun shines. It's a beautiful section of the course right here. They set up a little bit of a grass track, jump to the spectators. And the dirt is nice, and the weather is as well. There's still a little bit of mud down there, but most of this track is treacherous. It is a mudder. So Bithel trying to put the hammer down here over the concrete blocks and all the other obstacles set up for the fans to watch. And he's doing a good job of it right now. Had a six second lead on Brian Wolf at the end of lap one. That's the pro field starting to roll through here. We saw Landon Wolf who's also on Suzuki. Again, one of the most of uh, newcomers in this division. We've got a good mix of veterans and new kids out here. This rider is a veteran, Bithel. Been in this game a while, has won a bunch of races. Number four in the championship last year. I'd say last year that switch to Suzuki, a real step up for him. Uh, ran up front a lot, and once they had all the things sorted out with the vehicle, uh, they had uh, some real success at the end of the year, including some wins. Now we've got a battle on our hands, I believe, between Wolf and Borich for second and third. We're starting to get eaten up here, and the riders are running out of ground clearance. Borch up into second. Tough to figure out who is who because the machines are just covered. I'm just going to tell you where they stood after the first lap. We mentioned Wolf and uh, Borch second and third. They were battling fourth was McGill, fifth Fowler, sixth was Brent Sturdivant. Good to see him back in action. Uh, Wolf, we mentioned him, young kid on the Suzuki. He's seventh. At the end of lap one, Jared McClure. He is eighth. Ninth was uh, Pickens, who had the good start. And rounding out your top 10 at the end of lap one was Kevin Yoho on the BNR Yamaha. Bithel continuing to control it. Uh, this section was uh, just a little water crossing and then fairly dry on lap one. Now that everyone has hit it, uh, as we go to lap two, you can see the mud is just being dragged out in front and behind. And that's also a byproduct of the dirt here. Sand holds rain and mud a lot better. It kind of just drains right through. That's why you don't see huge puddles usually at the beach. But uh, here, a little bit more clay. Uh, the mud has nowhere to go. It stays on top and, like we said, drags right out of those water crossings deep onto the track. Working our way through the Rocky Mountain ATV MC Pine Forest. Things start to pick up. Borage keeping the heat on Bithel. Wolf hanging tough. And now Fowler, I believe, starting to stir. It's the normal Fowler situation. He had to work his way through traffic a lot last year and stuck doing it again. It just takes a lot of energy out of you when you have to charge so hard early. I guess, I believe that's Yoho there working his way forward, trying to get into that top five and make a run at the lead. And this looks like a... He just got on YouTube and just picked out a swamp run. He's missing a couple of snorkels and four-wheel drive. Oh, look at that. A pass and a fist pump, I believe, by Wolf to get around Borich. Here comes Fowler, who continues to work his way forward. He's in fourth and trying to close that gap. But again, the amount of work that Fowler is having to put in, very similar to what happened to him at this race last year, or at the Florida race last year, the opener, different terrain. But still, similar scenario. These guys are just running a good steady pace out front. He's having to catch them. Looks like uh, Borch has gotten back around Wolf. And Fowler is now into third. So what happened to Wolf? Obviously, in these muddy conditions, anything can happen at any time. And as everyone likes to say, you can win the, uh, you can lose a title in the first race. You can't win it. Could be critical. Just try to keep the machine running. Now Borch has an opportunity to take the lead. I think he was surprised by that. Line opened up. I don't think he wanted it. Bithel continues to lead. This is a little bit strange.
Sometimes you come across something so different, you just have to stop and check it out. The Rocky Mountain ATV MC website has everything you need, from our huge selection of tires, ATV and UTV accessories, and OEM parts, to our online chat, customer reviews, and instructional videos. Our extensive inventory means most orders arrive in three days or less. Get low prices, quick shipping, and incredible customer service. RockyMountainATVMC.com. Get ready. Racer TV is brought to you by Amsoil. By Rocky Mountain ATV MC. And by NN. Welcome back to the battle here. Mudmuckers GNCC brought to you by Moose Racing. Chris Bindle continues to lead over Chris Borich. And they're trying for a two-man breakaway. Look at Walker Fowler. He's doing everything he can to try to catch the lead duo. But uh, the harder you push sometimes, the more difficult it is. We have lost Brian Wolf from this group. That was Jared McClure, and uh, that, I believe, is Yoho, fourth and fifth. Yoho just had a little tree there, shrugged that off. And then here comes McGill, who cannot resist a camera. He is going to give you something to watch. The fans now trying to throw paper towels toward the riders so they can clean off the goggles, the gloves, and the grips. I guess the uh, gloves and the grips most primarily uh, not going to work through here. These guys are on the move. They don't have time to stop. They don't have time to slow down even. As Fowler has indeed finally gotten within touch of the leaders. So we're going to have a three-way fight for it. Listen to how hard they are revving these machines out. And when you're in mud like this and you've got the radiators all packed up and you're just slipping the clutch, which creates a lot of heat. Well, that can make it tough to get all the way to the finish line, although the unrelenting sand whips in the past were awfully tough on clutches as well. The ATVs are a lot heavier and the wider contact patch of the rear tires puts a lot more strain on the clutches uh, than it does on the bikes. And actually, the legendary Hinson clutches uh, that are popular in both forms of racing was originally invented for the ATVs because of so much more drive that they put down to the ground. So you got to manage it through here. you got to try to get the machine to finish first before you can finish in first. More in a moment. Let's give you the highlights of our morning race brought to you by Can-Am. Now, this is the new 4x4 Pro class. For years, we've had a couple of dominators in a couple of different 4x4 classes. This year, let's put them all in one pot, stir it up, and see who's got what it takes, especially on a track like this in the mud. Four-wheel drive is not a disadvantage. These machines can fly. Yeah, they're a little bit heavier, but the suspension and engine technology in these machines have come a long way. We've got a good mixture of manufacturers in here as well. We've got the Can-Am uh, Outlanders and Renegades. You're also going to have some Polaris mixed in with the Michael Swift of the controls. This is going to be fun to watch all year long. It reads like a who's who in this division. you got Michael Swift, Robert Smith, Jordan Phillips, Rick Checo, Brian McCannon, and Kevin Trantham all doing battle. Those are your six 4x4 Pro Riders, and what a show they put on. Swift led on the first lap. Then you got Smith, the big nuts racing machine. You can see the green livery there, running the pace. The Polaris is stick out. That's Checo and Swift. And don't count out Buck Hannon here trying to work his way forward. Here's where four-wheel drive pays off. Swift here on the Polaris, just nailing it. Man, is that fun to watch? And I'm sure pretty darn fun to do as well. Look how close these guys were also. Better racing in this division, closer. Uh, than what we see in the afternoon race with our Pro ATVs on the 450s. It was Michael Swift on the UXC Factory Polaris, multi-time champion of the limited and stock class of the 4x4, who led early on. He was setting the pace, but you had to watch out for the Can-Am X-Team rider, Kevin Trantham, keeping the heat on. This is what the machines look like when they're tearing it up here in our XC slow mo but Look at the suspension technology I'm talking about here. You see Swift, Trentham chasing each other through. It's like motocross level, what they're able to do on these things. Mechanical troubles late would strike Swift and put Trantham into the lead. Kevin is one of the nicest guys you'll ever talk to, but he is a fierce competitor. Let's send it to Jen Kenyon to talk to him. 
For the first time ever, GNCC Racing has a 4x4 Pro class. Kevin Trantham, you came from the 4x4 Lights class to actually take the overall here in the morning race and the first 4x4 overall. How does that feel? Oh, man, I, words can't explain. I mean, this is probably the sweetest win for me yet. You know, I've, I've took a lot of wins over the years, but, you know, being in this new 4 before pro class, you know, going up against the best of the best, you know, and, and coming out on top, uh, you know, it's just it's just awesome, you know. I know it's not going to happen every race. You know, I look for different winners maybe every round, you know, but to come out and, and get the first win, I'm, I'm so thankful. Thanks, Jen, and Brian McKenna will climb up to second by the time that one's over with Rick Checo in third. That is going to be an awesome championship fight to watch. Now back to our pro race. Midland has done a fantastic job holding up under pressure. Occasionally, Orange gets to him. We've seen what Fowler here in third has been able to do. He's in the fight at times also. But Bithel has not relented. And it's our first shout out for the Killer Bees here in 2014 as Bithel and Borge continue to set the pace. Oh, a nice little line there on the inside by Borich. Down on the left, gonna be the key to racing in the mud. Now you see in slow motion, look at the wheel spin. You can't tell in the regular speed how hard these guys are really on it. That's what I'm talking about when you're uh, trying to make sure the machine gets to the finish line. They have these things revved out a lot when you have this much wheel spin. It's hot down here today. And like you said, the engines and radiators are just plugged. Look at the roost. And this is just a normal segment. You can't imagine how difficult it is when you're sliding around like that to still perfectly place the machine within the trees. Now we're into the section. We get a little bit more traction out of the mud and into the fields. It's a cool deal we set up here so the fans can get a good look at your leaders as they come around too. And they're getting to see the killer bees in action. Midland and Borich leaning on each other with Fowler not too far back in third. I think we're headed to the last lap now. And this is normally, no, it's two laps to go. Just going to make it in on time. So Midland has two laps to try to deal with the pressure of the five time and the defending champ, Chris Borich. And you've got Fowler waiting in the wings if they make a mistake. What do you call a machine? that combines precision engineered handling, industry leading power, and a rider focused design. We call it a Can-Am. From the essentials to fully loaded, you'll find that same combination in every ATV and side-by-side -side rebuild. And right now, get your own for as low as $149 a month. Can-Am, the ride says it all. Racer TV is brought to you by Amsoil. By Rocky Mountain ATV MC. And by NM. Battle continues to rage here at the Moose Racing Mudmuckers GNCC. A pair of Suzuki's. Mithel back by Precision Racing and Max's tires. And every time you look and you think it's just a two-way fight, you see that NFAB Ampro Yamaha Fowler closing back up. If these two make a mistake, Fowler can take advantage, but Bithel and Borch have a lot of experience battling each other. They're good friends on and off the track, both from Pennsylvania. Both spent a lot of time riding down here in Florida together, so I do not think you're going to see any dirty work. Well, besides the inevitable mud and water, Bithel Actually, Borch, I think, is taking over the lead and takes a look over his shoulder, sees Bithel and Fowler not too far behind. Now, I don't think Borch wanted the lead earlier. He had a shot at it in the open section before one of our commercial breaks, and he didn't really go for it. But now, apparently, the champion feels the time to push has come. Bithel going to try to get him back, and now Fowler is right where he wants to be. He's got a shot at it. See some of the Borich bandits down here with the yellow t-shirts down in the woods trying to point out the good lines. And I believe that was Bithel that just came through. Back into the lead. So Borich has to get back to work. 
where you could really take a chance through some of these sections to get off the main line. You might end up making a pass or you might end up ending your day. So we'll see how these guys want to play it. Man, poor Walker Fowler. Every time he puts in the push and gets to the lead duo, they're able to get back away from him. He has worked hard for what could end up just being a third place finish. Bithalyn Boric still duking it out. And we're into the fields. Here we go. It's where Boric likes to do his damage on the last lap. Around the outside, and I think he's got Bithel. Bithel pushed back to second. He's going to try to tuck back inside. Here we go. Oh, this is where Chris Borch makes his money. He might be the king of the woods, but we have seen some highlight reel footage of making passes and the open stuff with the finish line within sight. And today, no exception. Bithel's got to try to hang in there and... I would say hope for a mistake. That's next to impossible. Maybe just hope for an opening and stuff it in there. And now we see some steam coming out of Borich's engine. Probably boiling over, I mentioned. Spinning tires, hot temperatures, mud in the radiator. That is going to be a factor out here. Is Borch's machine going to last all the way to the end? Or if it even loses a little bit of horsepower, could that open up the door for Bithel? That steam could turn to smoke at any moment. And then you know you're in trouble. Look at how much steam is boiling out, but we're only about two turns away from it. Chris Borch says we'll rebuild the motor for round two. I'm going to victory lane, and he does. And a fist pump for Bithel. He ran a great race, ends up in second. Here are your Ramsoil results, Fowler third, McClure. Nice run, and Josh Merritt, his XC1 debut. I mentioned the kids at the beginning of the race. He finished fifth. Hendorn, Gallagher, Neil Pickens, Craig Bowman. Round out your top ten. Let's do the Amsoil race recap. Chris Borich, grab your hole shot. This is the last time you're actually going to see the number one because everyone was covered in mud the rest of the day. You can see clue the number four of Mitchell for the front of the pack early. Takes the lead, and he would lead the majority of it. Look, here is a shot. Or Boric to make the pass. I don't think he wanted it this early. Got this real cool spectator section set up here. Two friends battling it out. And we got to the open field once again late. Then Boric wanted the lead, and once he wants it, he usually goes out and gets it. He's got himself another victory. Thanks for watching.